In this issue of www.spicyreads.org, Cindy Dobrez and Lynn Rutan at www.mibookends.blogspot.com join me and Mike and Barb and Ann as we speak to Stephanie Hemphill, author of Your Own Sylvia, a verse novel of Sylvia Plath. Welcome, Stephanie Hemphill, to www.spicyreads.org. Tell us a, something about your own Sylvia that we don't know. Now, mind you, we know a lot about your book. The first thing that comes to my mind that you might not know about your own Sylvia that's really personal is writing that book saved my life. Whoa. Okay, there's a story there. <laughs> Yeah, much in the way that when I first discovered Sylvia Plath as a writer, um, it kind of saved me too. I was 15 and my friend Jamie read me the poem or gave me the poem, Edge, which was perhaps the last poem that Sylvia wrote before her death. It's, it's thought of being the last poem. And I thought I had it really bad back then. Um, you know, the boy I liked didn't like me, and my parents didn't understand me, and I was in a really dark phase, and things weren't going at all well. But when I read Sylvia, she kind of went to a farther place than I could go. She went there for me so that I didn't have to go all the way down the hole. And I think that's one of the powers of Sylvia Plath, or of really great yeah. writing, Yeah. is that it can heal you in some ways, mm -hmm. or it can go places that are dangerous, or more dangerous than you want to go by yourself. And give you an experience that you otherwise wouldn't be able to get exactly. without some brutal consequence. Without the total pain of it, or without having to go through what the actual experience is, you can feel it. Mm -hmm. You can empathize with it, you can experience it, but only by reading through it. She gets you, you get it, but you don't have to actually live it. I would like to ask a, a two-point question. I, I gather from having talked with Stephanie and having read the book that she has some personal connection with Sylvia Plath and her life. And what I'm curious about is what do you think you have most in common? What's something that you have really in common with Sylvia? And what's a way in which you think that you were very different from her, from what you know about her? Oh, great question. Great question. <laughs> I think the thing that I have most in common with Sylvia Plath is a lot of stuff that has to do with her brain chemistry. And I'm hesitant a little bit to talk about this, but at the same time, I feel like there's a bravery with it, so I'm going to try mm -hmm. that aspect. I think Sylvia Plath was an undiagnosed um, bipolar. She was a really brilliant mind in a lot of difficult circumstances that weren't quite understood, and she tried. She did have a very good therapist, but she didn't have the right hospitalization and she didn't have the right chemicals. Uh -huh. And people don't understand mental disorders. They think that it means you're not trying hard enough uh -huh. or you're weak. They don't understand it like diabetes, that it's not much different than that or even cancer or anything like that, that it's a struggle for somebody in that same way. It just literally means that your brain doesn't create as much serotonin or other chemicals that you need. Now you need to talk about what oh, you are, how you're I'm different. Too. Yeah, then that's every bit as important. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know. How am I different from Sylvia Plath? Well, I've never modeled swimsuits. <laughs> um, <laughs> 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 I don't think I could. I wouldn't be brave enough for that. Um, I don't have two little children. I uh -huh. wish that I did but I don't. Um, so I think that's one of the big things, is that I'm not a mother. I'm going to now pan over to um, uh, my friends Mike and Barb. You've spent the evening here with um, Stephanie Hemphill, and uh, Mike, you're a little bit familiar with the book, and Barb um, less so. 
Has Stephanie done anything to make you want to pick up and look at your own Sylvia? Yes, uh, with, without question. I just heard an eloquent description of uh, chemical insufficiency, if we could call it that. How do we make it acceptable when we talk to teens? Why do we always have to be afraid of that truth? I hope it's education. Mm -hmm. I hope that in health classes it starts not being something people are embarrassed of mm -hmm. or afraid to speak about. That it's taught that it isn't any different. That you're not crazy mm -hmm. and you're not going to do something insane or I that it's not in that realm, that it's really about body and chemistry and it's physical just like everything else. It's not weakness. Okay, Stephanie, what's new in the book world for you? What's can you give us an exclusive on your yeah. on your next Wicked. new book? Uh, uh, my new book is called Wicked Girls. It will be out in 2010. And it is a verse story of the 1692 Salem witch trials told from the perspective of the teen accusers who ha were the most powerful girls of 1692 who accused everyone of being witches in the town. Whoa. Thank you so much for appearing on www.spicyreads.org. Um, pleasure to have you here in pleasure my home. Pleasure to be here. Thank you so much, Ed. Okay. And Anne, and everyone. <laughs> okay, I, I like the yada, yada, yada. Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> We've been speaking with Stephanie Hemphill, author of Your Own Sylvia. I think Lynn Rutan sums up all of our feelings about this magnificent book. There's so much in that book, truly, that I could spend hours and hours with Stephanie talking about the poetry. This is Ed Spicer. Thanks for listening to www.spicyreads.org.